if you're wondering what you do with the uh, use rolls of film okay so I have laid out the plans for the what I'm calling the midsection of the wing because then we've got the tip I'm doing the right side I've identified the carbon spars um, a little note here that on this midsection there's actually a join between the two so you'll find that um, you'll see it on the uh, instruction you'll see it on the plan so uh, just get that in place and I would if you're just give the bit this hidden a little bit of a sanding to take the gloss off of it the waxing off of it fit that on there and then get that in place uh, I've got my the outer tubes for the wing attachments this is very interesting because this is a new one this is the aileron spar and I've obviously got a leading edge spar and basically what you've got to do is you I've got to cut out all of these and a load of these I'll get back to you <laughs> so when they're all done uh, we'll get on to right the next, next update I have my trailing edge just like you sanded the trailing edge not gone mad just give it a bit of a lick I've cleaned all my ribs I've got the leading edge ready I've got the aileron torque tube ready now, the thing we have to talk about, and I just wanted to talk through how I'm doing it. I'm not saying this is the right way, but this is how I'm doing it. The main spar is, has got a join about two thirds of the way out. So you go from um, a fairly biggish tube down to a smaller tube, fits down inside. What I wanted to do is let me just talk you through how I've actually done it uh, to try and make sure that it's not going to be mega critical but I just wanted to make sure that when I actually glued the two tubes together that I didn't get any drift so in other words you know that one is actually just on a slight lean because that would be quite easy to do let me show you right so I've got my uh, carbon tube is butted up against this metal block and the rib is holding it at the right height Then I'm down to I've put them um, just slid in not glued B20 here's our join and I have just given that a little bit of a wipe with um, some emery paper just on the inside bit just to take the gloss off for a better bind I've then got B24 not glued just sitting in place and then I've got another metal block and that's holding uh, B35 so they're all the same height now I'm happy with that and I'm just going to give it a bit of an eyeball I'm going to have a cup of tea <laughs> I'm going to just drip a very small amount of um, thin sino just down into this joint and then what the next thing is we're going to do is obviously then start loading up all the ribs um, to start gluing them in place but that's just a quick idea of how I've done the spar right so slid all the rig, ribs on um, I did actually put these in place and I would recommend that that's ribs B uh, one two and three and this is just putting that in all in place just to get it jigged up properly but you don't glue those yet I've got them all happy I've glued them to the trailing edge now little tip here um, I've got to be honest with you and say that I started tacking these with a little bit of thin sino but there's a quite a big tolerance between the um, rib and the spar and I found that my thin signer wasn't tacking a few of them so what I've done is I've actually just blotted in places anything that was slightly loose because um, I just didn't want to keep running the, the thin signer because it was just going to whip down through the rib and then stick to the plan although I've got some plastic covering that so just bear that in mind so I'm just going to let this all dry off and then the next thing is we're going to add the leading edge which is exactly the same as the um, main spar now at the moment I have just tacked that in place but making sure that I haven't connected that or glued that here so this is just B6 and I've also got the B34 uh, 
uh, which I've just broken. I've got to be honest with you, why that, all right, let me show you, that needs to be in basswood, quite frankly. That's too small for two bigger holes. See, I've broken that. That needs to be in uh, the same as this wood, I think. I'll have to speak to um, performance models about that because that's that's got break me written all over it. Well, I just okay, I have got the wing off the bench, I've got the main spar in. Now, little tip there, I just used some sellotape, not sellotape, this some brown packing tape to pull uh, the leading edge on. So I can now uh, literally go over this and wick this all on with, um, I'm gonna use, again, start off with thin cyano and then beef it up later. Then when we've done that, the next thing we need to talk about is inserting the aileron spar through this rear jiggy me pokery whatever we're calling it anyway i'll get back to you in a tick right we've built the wing you've now got to insert this through this is the rear aileron spar well this is the aileron spar and i kid you not this is the first time i've done it There you go. Now you just got to glue this with uh, thin cyano and then I shall wick it up with some thick cyano. Basically the construction of the tip or section C is exactly the same as we've done before. Slightly different here in as much as obviously we're still not gluing in permanently C1 and C2 because we're going to be joining there, got to be able to bit of jiggling for the actual wing joining so just remember when you're doing your trailing edge if you've done anything to the trailing edge of the main and mid sections do the same to that as well I just very just literally took the edge off of mine I didn't go mad that's going on there then you've got this little piece that's going to fit on here and that's going to drop in there like so and what you'll do is you'll then add all your ribs and we're also putting in, I think this is basically a tip strengthener, is going to fit in. And then the idea is you then drop this chap in here, like so. That then drops on the top like so. And this bit then glues onto there. Obviously we'll have the ribs as well and the leading edge. Um, so I'm just going to clean these all up. And then I might just do a little bit of um, quick sort of video of me joining it. But I don't think it's anything particularly difficult. But also I would suggest to actually sand this to shape now. And you'll see a bit in the instructions about the shape. I would sand this to shape now once you've got it all glued up. Because it's going to make it a lot easier than if you've got this connected to panel B. Because remember this joint is going to be permanent is not removable so the join between c and b is a permanent fix not um, unplugging so um, i'll just clean this up and we'll go through it okay so i have finished b and also C, and I've just given that a sand. My suggestion is get this all sanded up now because otherwise it'll be a nightmare trying to sand it when this is permanently glued to uh, the outside of B. So now what we've got to do is we've got to join panel B to the main panel, which is panel A. Um, there is a dihedral guide on here, and I've just marked mine. Uh, it's actually marked with laser, but I've just marked mine with a biro as well, so you know what I'm like. So what I've got to do is I've got my, uh, let me just show, talk you through what we're doing. It's going to be a little bit fiddly. So this is going to be using plenty of weights, plenty of blue tack and anything else just to get it at the right angle. But there is something that I really must point out to you. 
because I nearly had a heart attack when I put my two wings together as a trial join and um, literally thought I'd messed it right up but I'll explain what's going on. So panel A, I've got some weight on it holding it down in place. I've already just added um, A22, A21 and A20, they are not glued, they are just put in place. I've trial fitted the um, actual wing joiners. Now, in the kit, it does suggest that we put these end caps in. I'm not putting the end caps in right at the moment, and I'll tell you why, because this, I think, being allowed to let this slide in and out is gonna give me just a little bit more extra wiggle room like this when I come to join it all. Um, I might be wrong, I'll let you know how I get on. But anyway, so the next thing now is I'm just going to add uh, B1, B2 and B3 to here. Jack it up and then I'm going to slot it all into place. Now let me just show you what I was talking about. Look, when they're actually joined together like so, those two spars don't meet up. Now on my plans and on the instructions, they actually appear to be shown to be joined up. But I've spoken to um, performance models and they said that's absolutely fine. All the load is taken by these. So you can imagine when I first put this together like that, I was like, oh no, what have I done? But apparently it's absolutely fine. So the next thing I'm going to get back to you, <laughs> I'm only going to come back to you because then you won't hear loads of swearing while I'm um, <laughs> actually jiggling it all together. Right, took some fiddling. But it's all in and my tip about the expending the spars out there and then when I got it all jigged in place slid that along that just gives it a bit more security. I've just used a tiny little bit of blue tack just to stop these um, rods sliding in and out. Just make sure that you've got them fitting tight. I mean I might end up having one hanging out but it doesn't look right. It does look right and now so what we are now going to do is obviously we're gluing this, 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 this. When obviously being careful, we're not going to glue these two ribs together. Um, so what I am going to do is I'm just going to use some thick cyano um, just in these areas. And uh, but that's gone very well. A little bit fiddly, but um, right here we go. I'm doing this live. Let's see what happens. And then, oh, oh, wow, there you go, <laughs> it worked, <laughs> oh dear, right, so all I'm going to do now is just add a bit more glue around it. Uh, what I'm really pleased with is the tubes are all beautifully recessed. Look at that, really pleased with that. That's gone cracking. Hang on a minute, let me just show you once more. Obviously these holes here, this is going to be for where the magnets are going to go. So let's put that in there. I can obviously now fit the plugs. That goes on there like that. That goes on there like that. Boom. Well, it don't get much better than that, does it? <laughs> it worked. <laughs> oh dear. Right, so all I'm going to do now is just add a bit more glue around it. Uh, what I'm really pleased with is the tubes are all beautifully recessed. Look at that, really pleased with that, that's gone cracking, hang on a minute, let me just show you once more. Obviously these holes here, this is going to be for where the magnets are going to go. So let's put that in there, I can obviously now fit the plugs, that goes on there like that, that goes on there like that, boom. Well it don't get much better than that does it? Well, I'm really pleased with how uh, joining panel A to panel B went. 
Oh, that just that was actually live. I literally thought I'd take the gamble. I can always edit it out if I didn't, but yeah, really pleased with that. Now we're now joining um, panel B to panel panel C. Now this is a permanent join, um, so you're just going to need your uh, C2, C1, B33, and B34. Now, uh, sorry, B35. Now B34 is the tiny end for the ailerons now don't forget to add that now but i've actually not right. i'm not going to glue my lips. so you've got your dihedral brace which is um c to go in and this is what i'm talking about this one here at the moment i'm not going to glue that because obviously that's going to get separated anyway so i made sure it's just on the end of the rod but I'm going to glue that after I'm happy with all of this first. So this is going to get glued first. And then I'm going to join this afterwards like so. Remembering that you need a little gap between it. So my advice is again, I put a little bit of plastic down between B34, B35. Because obviously this is all part of the aileron that's going to move. Um, I'm going to use laser wood glue on the two ribs here, two main ribs here. Uh, that gives me some working time, so I'm going to take this apart, reload it, put it back down on the bench, and then when I've got it all squared up, I'm happy with it, then I'm going to use the um, thick sino again. But uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's gone very well. Right. <laughs> One main panel. One outer panel. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, gonna need a bigger shed. <laughs> okay, um <clears throat> the Tip C, join into tip B, went exactly the same as before. Remembering I just added that little tip uh, piece, which is B34 to the end of the ailerons. Um, it's all gone fantastically. Now, this is gonna be the end of this video because obviously I've got to build the left half, <laughs> put an extension out the back. Because the next thing we're gonna to need to look at, and it's, I wouldn't say it's, it's complicated in any way, but um, I'd like to talk through that complete process and I didn't wanna do build videos of like two or three hours so the next section we're going to be doing is there's some fair, few bits of, of in space fillers to go into places like here and I've then got to sort the ailerons out and the ailerons are going to need cutting and then they're going to need some uh, end cap strips put in on them and I really want to do that as a completely different video so I hope you've liked that. This is the end of video two of the Avanti build. And um, I'll see you on build three. If you're liking the video, just like and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you very shortly. If you're wondering what you do with the uh, used rolls of film, See me at Glastonbury next year. <laughs>